Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo back here again with another edition of our rant series here at Siri Tranquility. We got uh, the foursome back again. Ryan Scow, I think, over on this side. Nick yep, Franco here. below. Chris Allo over there in the corner somewhere. There he is. Welcome, oh, everybody, once again. So today we've got a pretty cool topic. This was actually uh, something that was uh, suggested by one of our viewers. How about a show where we talk about and show some albums we love that have pretty terrible album cover art? So we were all talking off camera about how this was actually pretty difficult. And Ryan said it best. It's like most of the great albums in history generally have pretty cool album covers. It's very rare that you see a, a classic album with really shitty cover album art. But I think we all found some that at least we don't like a lot. I don't know if any of these I actually hate, but uh, there's a couple that I just think could have been a hell of a lot better. A lot better. So uh, we're going to start down at the bottom, work our way around. So Nick, Chris, Ryan and myself. So Nick, you can kick us all off here. All right. Well, I'm going to kick us off with something that I think, um, I hope, you know, other people aren't picking, but you might. Um, Iron Maiden is my favorite band on earth. And their my album. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of people here. And uh, their album, um, 2003. Yeah, Dance of Death. Um, we had had a run of... Um, Incomparable album covers from that band. Show it, and show Derek, it, show it, show it. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, Derek Riggs was um, normally very, very good, but they didn't have him anymore. Ryan knows the full story uh, about what happened with this disaster. Apparently, it was a sketch that was presented to Steve Harris, and they said, This is what we're thinking about. And he said, No, do this for some reason. And I mean, I think Steve Harris is pretty much a god in human form but i i cannot for the life of me fathom how any of this is acceptable yeah. it's a good album it's got some great songs on it it's a great um, album yeah and uh sorry about the glare here and it basically just has like a weird baby and like all kinds of things on it that are just it's just terrible i can't even believe to this day that it's mm -hmm. a real made yeah. album it really and that was one, almost one of my picks. It is a horrible record. Not the record. The album cover is terrible. It's a good record. So here's my question. All right. I personally don't dislike that album cover, but I, I can understand what you're saying. If that's not an Iron Maiden album, is that still a bad album cover? Oh, uh, that's an excellent question. I, I think yes. I think even really? in the vacuum, it is to me. It's not appealing. Um, it's it, it's just weird. It is. And the previous album, to the rest of the Brave New World, Brave New, yeah. World, Brave New World was a, was a great album cover, and uh, yeah. Matter of Life and Death, I thought oh. it was a great album cover. Oh, that's yes. one of the best but ones. Yeah. Dance of Death, and uh, what's the one I fucking hated? That Final Frontier. Yeah, I, mean, I actually had to ask. <laughs> I knew you were going to bring that up. <laughs> like, is is that Eddie? He's like, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. Eddie. That's not a good album cover either. No, I don't so. think that's a great album. So you know, oh, I fucking hate that record, but that's another story. But yeah. but yeah, so they had some great great album covers and some real shitters. Yeah. All right. All right. Chris, what do you got? That's a good one. All right. Mine is, uh, this was definitely low hanging fruit. I mean, I love this record, but like every time there's a, like some dude goes on YouTube and it's like, okay, the worst heavy metal album covers of all time. This one's on it, but it is a really good record. And, uh, man, I did. I love this band in the eighties and it's uh man of war into glory ride. I, I mean, love that. Color. Color. I love Conan and the barbarian. Uh, but this is not a, a good album cover. And, you know, I always say nothing dates an album cover faster than putting a photo of the band. Don't ever do it. You know, your, your album cover should be like in space balls, merchandising. You got to put it on t-shirts. That's what the album covers for. Sell t-shirts. And, uh, this is not good on a, I think that cover yeah, fits the music. That's like the heaviest, darkest album they ever did. And that it's a great, like, it's a great album. Yeah, it's a great. But like to me, like Battle Hymns is like a, the perfect Man of War album cover, or even like Kings of Metal, mm -hmm. where, which, you know the Ken Kelly painting. Like, oh, this is a photo of them in like spandex and you know shit they bought from the Halloween store and <laughs> stuff from the Renaissance Fair is just so fucking cheesy. <laughs> But, um, so that's, uh, that's my pick. <laughs> All right, Ryan, what do you got? <laughs> All right, so my first pick, uh, I had to dig out the t-shirt for this. Uh, the old Hustle Riot Seal. I got to do the little swivel around here. 
So here we go, a muscly riot seal from uh this guy was on a couple of riot albums back in the day. And uh I don't know what possessed the band to not only pick that as a mascot, but use it multiple times. Like if you saw that guy in an alley, like this just jacked purple seal with this like this guy, like you get the fuck out of there. It's just, he's on uh, I think uh, a couple yeah, so Fire Down Under is my favorite riot album. I think it's kinda like the most iconic of their early eighties stuff. And that cover is just I don't know. I don't know. I, I kind of like it. Obviously, I'm wearing the shirt. But if somebody said that cover sucks, I'm going to have a real hard time defending it, too. Like, eh, come on, man. You know, a seal with a human body, you know, with these pink or purple. I, <laughs> yeah, it's a tough one. It's, it's a bizarre cover. But it's a great, great album. So It's a great album. I, I think Narita is actually worse than that. But, uh, yeah, that seal guy, just I don't know where they came up with that. Very strange. I, I never – I never researched it because I was kind of afraid to find out that the circumstances were even weirder than the actual art. So I just let it go. I like the music and, you know, just ignorance is bliss. Right. Yep. And to go back to Chris's pick, I almost picked Ted Nugent free for all for the exact same reason. You know, yep, I mean, yep. Nugent showing his armpit on the front, just like in all these different poses. I'm like, what is this? Yeah. You're supposed to be a heavy metal rocker. What are you doing posing on the front like this nonsense anyway? Yeah. Uh, and Chris, I apologize for my pick here. Um, okay. I, had, I, had to, I had to pick this. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, come on. This Listen, is a, it's awful, right? Awful. It's, it's I, I love Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath changed my life, but some of their album covers are shit. So... <laughs> Um, that was a terrible cover. <laughs> I still remember cover. the day that I first heard this album. My buddy Dave, when we were like uh, like 12, 13 years old, and he bought it at like a flea market or something like that. And he's like, come over, you got to hear this album. So he hands this to me, and I'm like, what is this? Yeah. I'm like, th th this, how stupid is this? What is, what is this outfit this stupid guy with the sword is wearing? I mean, it looks like something from like a cheesy, like late 50s sci-fi movie, right? But then he put the album on. I was like, holy crap, this totally does not represent what's on the cover. I mean, you know, and you, the funny thing is, looking back on this now, you look at the masterpiece that is the Black Sabbath debut and that album well, cover, and then they went with this. This looks right. like something they put together in like five minutes well, just to get the, the record. The crazy, the crazy thing, too, with that album cover is the whole thing is that was supposed to be the war pig? The pigs, yeah. Seriously? That's what? it? Like you couldn't have done a painting of like like a like a crazy pig with with machine guns and swords and <laughs> anything that? like this. A dude in leotards. <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. I had to pick it, man. I was like, no, you know no. what? I was like, I, I, was, I, had, I had that and I had Born Again, but I'm like, I don't actually oh, mind the Born Again cover. Born Again, so the Born like, Again cover. Right. I mean, it's, right. it's shitty art, but I still I still love the cover. It's amazing. Yeah, me too. It's amazing. I got it on T-shirts. I know Pete's got a T-shirt too. It's great. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Hell, I got I got the born again baby, you know, painted on my jacket. I mean, I I do. Gotta I love have that. it, right? I love Gotta that cover. It. Yeah. Yeah. All right, That's Nick, cool. what do you got? Uh, darkness. No. So what I have <laughs> is um, I wore the shirt, and the shirt is from the mid '90s when I got it. Uh, Moonspell. This actually says it's a Portuguese, uh, probably Portugal's biggest export. Um, band uh gothic sort of black metal -y, pagan all those types of things and their debut album um or excuse me their their the album that really broke them loose is called wolfheart and i'm gonna try to use my phone here to show you guys um this was the wolfheart cover now i love this i know it's hard to see uh i love it it's um there on the computer like that right so i love that so what's the problem? Well, the problem is, is they decided, Century Media, somebody decided to reissue the album. And this is what they came up with. Yeah. And if you can see that, that logo. That is ugly. It's dreadful. And the wolves, it looks like a National Geographic show, um, you know, instead of the beautiful, iconic um, logo with the, with the, the painted wolves howling at the moon. Um, I, I don't understand why uh i understand why they do reissues but um I, I i just don't understand for the life of me why they changed they never used the logo like that that's a cheesy that's like some kid drew it you know in a drunken rage or something like it just doesn't make any sense why they changed it and uh it looks like they went for shock value on that reissue <laughs> and i don't know why they always do stuff like that yeah yes. even the, yeah, yeah. the font of the of the album title is terrible too it just looks awful and they had a great thing they had a great uh Great album, one of phenomenal album. So, that's that. All right, Chris. 
All right, back to me. Um, some people, I think, maybe like this album cover. This is one of those, that weird company that does all them weird album covers for Pink Floyd did this one. But Hypnosis. I fucking hate it. Uh, it's my favorite Zeppelin record, Presence. And um, it's a family and like um, the thing that old ladies used to put to their ear when they can't hear stuff. And they're like sitting on a table. I don't understand it. It's way over my head. I guess I'm too much of a Neanderthal. Uh, but again, album covers are supposed to sell records and sell T-shirts. And I've never seen this on a T-shirt. And if you did put it on a T-shirt, someone would be like, why is that old family on your shirt? So um, I, don't, I don't get it. But I do love this record. It's my favorite Zeppelin record. But it's a good I can't album. stand this fucking album cover. And the Zeppelin was another band. I, I think a lot of their album covers are, are shitty. Um, and I think this is the worst. I think that Hypnosis album cover, I've seen more kind hypnosis. of divided. Yeah, it's like people either love that album cover right. because it's so like, what the fuck? Or right. they just hate it so much because they're like, what the fuck, right? It's yeah. just like, it's <laughs> totally. <laughs> what the fuck? And, and I guess it, their, their covers kind of work, I guess, for, for Pink Floyd. I'm not a Floyd fan. But they never, they, the, the Floyd things never annoyed me as much as, as this album cover always annoys me. And people are like, what is that black obelisk <laughs> thing? Like, what is, what is it? <laughs> you know, and, and the guys, and, and Jimmy Page will never, Jimmy Page will never tell you, right? It's like, <laughs> hypnosis will never tell you. He yeah. probably, he probably forgot. He probably put so much <laughs> of Peru up his nose, he can't fucking remember anyway, so. <laughs> but, yeah. All right, Ryan, what do you got? All right, so I'm going to, uh. Same idea as Nick, cool original art and shitty reissue. So in the early 90s, there was a Greek band called Necromancia, which is like an early uh, Greek, sorry, Greece had a pretty flourishing black metal scene about uh, 30 or so years ago, Rotting Christ, Varathron, and Necromancia was one of the big ones. So the second album is called Scarlet Evil Witching Black, and I got it here on vinyl. And this is a really cool, in my opinion, uh, they're like classic like black metal artwork you know you got this weird satan up there you know you got this uh, demon holding like i don't know what that is like a one of the sandworms from dune you know just a really the, like the, the thing in the, in the logo. yeah and the quote the logo is awesome it's got you know the classic like tails got upside down cross you know so it's iconic so then they reissued the album in the 90s on cd and they come up with this uh whoa whoa no oh, so this uh they fucked the logo up they got the moon like, <laughs> This dude's like screaming. He's like, I don't know what's going on there. They, you know, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know uh, what happened there and how they took a, a album cover that accurately, like, you know, you listen, you see the cover, you listen to the music, it fits. It's a good cover for the time, looks great. And then they redid it with this 90s, like, awful goth rock bullshit. I don't know. It was, it's a fucking eyesore, but. Uh, same idea as Nick, you know, why the record label did that was did the right. band even know about it. Did they sign off on that? Who knows? You know, but you, you and, and did they really think the they were going to sell more copies with the naked woman on the front? I, I was mean, maybe. Say, you you a, can tell it's from the nineties cause she's got the nineties porn star fake boobs. Yeah. It, it's, it, it, it's, it's, round like, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. Arts. They can't, so maybe they banked on that, but the art sucked. So who knows, yeah. you know, but, uh, when they reissued it a couple of years later, they finally, you know, they, put the original art back on, thank fuck. So the CD I have is like one of the rare reissues where it's uh has that shitty artwork, but. That's pretty bad. Yeah, it is. Bad. It's not it's even terrible. mildly interesting, yeah. No, no. it's terrible. Oh, well. <laughs> All right. Um... <laughs> I almost picked ah, that yes. one. <laughs> almost. <laughs> how, do I even need to say anything, right? Right, I what mean... the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yep. You know, I mean, I remember buying Restless and Wild, which had, you know, the U.S. version had the coolest album cover ever with them live right. on the front. You're like, kick ass. And then this came out and I'm like, please mm. don't tell me that's the new Accept album. Yeah, but it was. It was new Accept. <laughs> yeah. Morgan Freeman. A really good album, though. But <laughs> Great they, record. They, they couldn't. I mean, I was like embarrassed to bring. The, I was embarrassed to bring this home. Yeah. It is terrible. Terrible. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Sorry, guys. For those who don't know, this is Balls to the Wall by uh, Accept. Um, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't need to say any more. All you got to do is see it. That's it. Terrible. That's true. It's Terrible. Terrible. All right, Nick, I turn it back over to you. All right. So um, we are probably all of us uh, Slayer fans to some degree. And uh, Slayer's albums had the iconic artist uh, Larry Carroll, who passed away last year. 
Um, he was a very well regarded artist, even apart from what he did for Slayer, and he had a unique style. And I feel like the Slayer albums, the early ones, were really um, effective in that style. However, and I'm, I might be met with a lot of disagreement, but the Seasons in the Abyss album cover, I actually, I know, I'm sorry, I, I just, I like I it. Don't, I don't like it. Um, I, I don't like that the skull looks silly to me. It, it, it looks like something somebody scrawled in their eighth grade notebook. Um, and I think it really, it doesn't say Slayer anywhere on it. Like to me, they had such a great logo. Um, it just, it was, it was really weak to me. When you open up the CD, this is the original, you know, CD. When you open it up, ah, the glare, I'm sorry. Okay, there you go. See that? The crosses with all the Slayer written in it, and dead bodies and stuff. To me, that should have been the cover with the Slayer logo up here. And not that I mean anything to anybody, but if I was in the band, I would have pushed for that. Um, just a misstep in an overall, you know, excellent run of album covers. But I really feel with Season of the Abyss, they, they, they didn't swing as high as they could have with the, with the cover. I was actually. Yeah, I don't hate it, but it's never one of my favorites. Yeah. That was the first metal album I ever bought. Because, mm. you know, I'm 38, so I forget how old I was when I bought it. I was pretty young, so, yeah. like, nostalgia will just steamroll any criticism. Sure. I, True. I heard so young. Sure. Sure. Oh, yeah. It wasn't bad. It just. I, th I think it, it captured the Slayer vibe, but I agree with you. The actual art itself looks very amateurish. Yeah. Agreed. All right, Chris, what do you got? Uh, I talk about Danzig all the time because I love him, even though he's a little weird bastard. But um, I love this record. But wh what is this? This is yeah. <laughs> Danzig 4, and it's fucking terrible. It's like the Danzig skull, like, but like that Rorschach test thing. I'm like, what? What? what is this? I, I hate it. It's <laughs> terrible. Um, yeah, I don't know what the fuck they were thinking. Um, you know, there's all sorts of rumors that Danzig was trying to sabotage his own career at that point after the success of that uh, live mother EP. Who knows? Who knows what to believe? But that is a shitty album cover. Very good album. I agree. That is a yeah. terrible album cover. Terrible, Always terrible thought so. Cover. Yeah. <clears throat> all right, Ryan, back to you. All right. So my last three picks, uh, going straight to thrash metal. Uh, my first one, favorite album from the band, and the band is Testament. And the album is uh, The Gathering, which I, I, I don't really understand. I, I, you know what? I'm not really sure what's going on here. You got snakes, <laughs> a couple heads, drawing glasses. That one's a, a hypodermic needle. Uh, so I'm actually, I've never been a huge Testament fan, and 90% of my reason for loving that album, I'll give you two words, Dave Lombardo. I don't know. Yeah. I know it was his – this actually was his first thrash album, I think, back on after playing on Seasons in the Abyss, so that kind of worked out. And I don't know if he had a fire under his ass or something to prove, but he beats the fuck out of that album. He just fucks it up big time. And Chuck Billy and Eric Peterson, you know, whatever made them invite him in the band for at least that one album, it worked out because – Incredible. It's a, Lombardo Great record. It's a good album overall, but yeah. it's, to me it's a Dave Lombardo show. And yeah, that's their that's their painkiller for sure. I, I yeah, saw them yeah. on that tour and I got that shirt, but like I, I just noticed on on the album cover, I guess I haven't seen it in a while. Your your version it does say Testament. Um, yeah. I remember yeah. you know whatever oh God must have been twenty years ago or I guess or twenty something years ago getting the shirt on the tour and they reproduced the shirt just like on the album cover, but you know it didn't say Testament. So the big Testament logo, but the letters are cut off. So yeah, I'm getting right. the shirt, and I'm like, wait, it doesn't even actually fully. Yeah, say it's like cut off to the side there. You, you yeah, can't even it's read. Like, I'm like, oh, what the fuck? So yeah, that's that's uh, that's a good one because uh, that's a pretty bad cover. But didn't mm -hmm. they? They did reissue that with a different cover, but I don't know if it was better or worse. I know that's the uh, yeah. This is the original press from '99. Right. It's like so they, Spitfire, they might have Spitfire, I think, like it reissued was all the testaments and changed all the covers. Yeah, yeah. I always question that one too, but a kick ass out. Yeah, kick ass yeah, out. Great record. All right, we're gonna stick on thrash for my next one. Oh, that's a great one. Yeah, that album cover sucks. It's terrible, and it's yeah. a great album. It is. Yeah, I mean, and this is like a weird 
this is like the only bad album cover they ever had, really. Right. They had, what, like, Ed Reepka doing all the other album cover arts that are so great, and then they put this out, and the album is so good, and then it's like, well, what happened to this cheap-ass thing that they probably did in five minutes? Yeah, like, it's like, wait, did, did we not have time to get a painted cover? So somebody just took a picture of the TV? Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah. That's what it looks like. Yeah, terrible cover. Like, so it's far, so album, good, though. so what? I mean, it's just yeah. like, it's just like, I, what happened here? I don't know. No, I was so young. I was so young that that album cover scared me. I remember that. I was, I thought it was real. Yeah, I was was pretty young. Scary, but it's so bad. I mean, but the the, the album kicks ass, but I I remember buying this and I was like, I hated this album cover so much. For a while, I almost didn't even want to listen to the record, but now Mm -hmm. it's it's a great record, but Dave and company, what did, what were you doing here? What were you thinking? It's sandwiched between probably like Peace Cells and Rust in Peace are probably, in my opinion, like the most iconic Probably their best art, you know, with big on. And those are such great covers. And then they put out that, which is just not. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good one. Back to you. So um, I'm going to be picking on a band I love very much um, Blind Guardian, who I mentioned briefly before. Uh, Their very first album, now, this was a long time ago. I love that art, Nick. Yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, and it's, you know, they, they, first of all, let me just say, they, they wind up having some of the best album covers, hands down, amazing. But the funny thing about this, if I can pull it, is that these two robed figures look like they're playing with wrestling figures from the 80s. The LJN figures? <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they look like... I never thought like of it. They're playing with wrestlers. Like, I don't know, it's just so goofy. That's awesome. It's so goofy, but I mean, I love it, you know, I... I I love them. I just think that that's such a goofy album cover. You know, it was the cheesy 80s stuff. But um, I feel bad even picking it because it's such a good album and they're so good. But how yeah, does but anybody you know, you get stack this? that up next to all their other ones and then oh, you see how so cheesy. Weak. I mean, because their album covers are pretty spectacular. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, it's so weak. So I don't know how somebody gets that in front of them and goes, <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> this is this is what we want. <laughs> I don't know how you do were. That. They were a brand new band, you know. They were just starting yeah. off, so I kind of see it from that perspective. But I like that art, I, silly, but it has I, an appeal. I, it, I know what you mean, but it was mm-hmm. pretty, the, the wrestling figure thing. That's what. If I it wasn't that, it. I'd probably be all right with it. Look at it the same way. <laughs> all right, Chris, what do you got? All right. Well, li- listen, I, I'm not the death metal expert that, that that Nick and Ryan certainly are by by far, but a lot of people have called this the. Uh, the greatest death metal album of all time. Me personally, uh, I, it's my favorite death metal album of all time, but I hate this fucking cover. And it's Cannibal Corpse, The Bleeding. Like, mm. what the fuck? Like, I, uh, it looks like somebody spilled, like, cocktail sauce or something. Like, I just, I don't get it. And, and uh, you know, the reissue has the original cover that they were going with, which, why do they ban this one? It's just some, you know, some okay-looking zombies. I don't know why, but... Man, I hate this thing. And it's like, you know, it's it's like balls to the wall. Like, you, you can't put this on a shirt. This yeah. is stupid. So, yeah, I, I, I do love this record. Uh, I still listen to it a lot, but, um, yeah, it's a terrible cover. And Cannibal had some great covers. And that sticks it out did. like a sore thumb among right. all their album covers, it right? It does. Yeah. It, so, it is pretty terrible now that you mention it. Yeah. All right, Ryan, back to you. All right, so uh, another thrash pick here. So this is a pretty obscure band at the end of the 80s when thrash metal and death metal were kind of like merging, starting to feel each other out. And you had this one American band called Morbid Saint put an album called Spectrum of Death, which is like probably the perfect hybrid of like ultra-violent thrash metal uh, and death metal together. And some bands really got big, like Sadist, Demolition Hammer from New York. Well, these guys, I think, put out one of the best albums. But the album cover from Spectrum of Death, and I have the reissue, so I didn't bring up my computer, is... Oh, I remember it's, that. It's like a Sam's Club uh, Iron Maiden Eddie. It's just terrible. <laughs> it is, it's terrible. It's like, Dollar Store Eddie. <laughs> it, is, it is a terrible Eddie, and uh, the, the album is, it's like, it's, it's like a song. Every song is just brutal as fuck. It's so good, and the art... You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's I'm going to have nightmares about that thing tonight. <laughs> it's like really <laughs> shitty. Probably Steve Harris didn't sue them for like doing a really shitty Eddie. But well, wow. That is awful. My God. It's great. That's album. funny. If you yeah, that was like a dollar apple. store action figure, it would say Teddy. Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> but like in the Iron Maiden font. 
<laughs> but yeah, if, if you're into like old creator, old slayer, like that brutal thrash, then this album is it's mandatory. It's so good, but the art just yeah. sucks. That's a, that's a rough one. You guys want some more hypnosis? Yeah. Oh yeah! Oh, Holy yeah. crap! Yeah. yeah. UFO had some shitty covers. I, I, Hypnosis did all the early ones, and I yeah, some of them are not. Uh, this I I I mean I like monkeys like everybody else does, but what right. what what is this? Yeah, the Don't monkey with you. the, the no, it's it, I mean it's called yeah. no heavy petting. Here you got this monkey on this woman's shoulder with this weird tube coming out of him into the back of her neck. I I, I don't know. I don't get it. What is it? Nobody yeah, knows. That's a weird. Yeah. That's a weird one. It's weird. Good it's album. Really, a yes, great no, album. Good record. Great album. Good record. I, I sure. almost I almost picked Forcet too with the two women in the shower yes. like the salt I, each other. I was like, Shh. but this is weirder. I think so. I don't know. That's my pick. Nick, back to you. So I'm actually unfortunately going to pick on our German friends again, um, as much as I love them, and as we stated after after the you know first album there, they they really went on a, a run of albums that were just. Uh, incredible and comparable artwork and then they came out with um a night at the opera and i feel like uh the cover just is freaking terrible um i don't know if you guys can see yeah but mm -hmm. just the quality of the faces the the conductor it's just dreadfully dreadfully sophomoric and i can't for the life of me figure out how you go from the majesty of nightfall in middle earth and somewhere far beyond uh, Tales from the Twilight World. These these are covers. If you're not familiar with them, uh, look them up. They're amazing, and um, they just shit the bed with that mess of a cover. And and you just you're left wondering why. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I agree. I thought the same thing when that album came out. Yeah. It's yeah. Good album, not a good cover. Yeah. <clears throat> Too colorful. Too colorful and just poor quality. Yeah. All right, Chris, what do you got? All right, uh, my all-time favorite band, but uh, I definitely don't don't have a problem with poking uh, poking fun at them. And uh, it's a, what the fuck, Black Sabbath sabotage. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. Ozzy's, in a, Ozzy's in a dress. Bill Ward apparently didn't know what to wear, so he made his wife take her red pants off, and he put on his wife's pants. Tony uh. Iommi, who's unquestionably the coolest guy in Black Sabbath ever could not look any lamer. And I'm like, wait, at the time, wasn't Tony already wearing black all the time? Mm -hmm. Except when he went to take this album cover? What? Terrible. Awful. <laughs> awful. I hate it. Uh, oh, Bill Ward's oh, red record. tights are legendary, man. Oh, Come on. Decades. <laughs> what a great record, you know. But, yeah, hate that record. I'm you got to think drugs play a role. You know, oh, of course. Sure. Yeah. You got to think drugs. Seven. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> All right, Ryan, back to you. All right, so my last pick is uh, I, I have to go with the best one here. Another thrash band. So this is the German thrash band Sodom. Uh, probably oh, the God. only legendary 80s thrash band that never shit the bed from 1983 until today. Uh, they just put out solid albums. Even if some of the stuff's a little less memorable, they've always been just true to themselves and an awesome band. So in the late 90s, they put out an album called Till Death Do Us Unite. And uh, I have the CD, but I had to put it on a computer because I wanted this full-size artwork here so everybody can enjoy this masterpiece. Uh, so here we go. That is the... <gasps> oh, that's right. I forgot about that one. A, a, a pregnant lady with large tits and a very fat man and a skull. So uh, I don't know what that's going on there. Uh, maybe somebody in the audience knows more than I do about that, but... Right. Nick, uh, Nick is, is horrified. <laughs> it, is, it is an awesome album. And for like the, I think it was 97. For 97, <laughs> there were very few thrash bands playing still like brutal thrash, you know. Metallica, Megadeth, they had all fucked off into like alternative yeah. rock. And Sodom are still kicking ass. And that cover, you would not know that by looking at that cover because yeah. it's, it's yeah, bizarre. About that. <laughs> yeah. And then after that, they went, they had uh, Code Red, which is back to their classic oh, M16. Right. All great, or, you know, classic yeah. Artwork, and this is like the one weird exception in their catalog. So, Somehow, know. I've never seen that till this moment. I was today years old when I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll uh, bring that back for another round. Yeah, that's, and you know what? It's a great album. By all means, uh, uh, check it out if you get a chance. It's a, a really yeah. awesome. someone must have a bootleg shirt of that on eBay. Oh yeah, I, 
Or someone's never doing one right now. I've, I would remember if I saw that at a show or a fest, and I've never seen that, even a patch anywhere. And people wear right. socks up all the time. And you got to put I, that up one more time. Oh, yeah, we can, we can bring it up. Put it up, up one more time. time. So, we I, got, I, can't, I can't unsee this now. Yeah. Jesus. It, it's, it's real. It's a, it's a piece of art. I mean, you know, that's why She's I say pregnant. that last, because nothing I have in my collection could uh could She's top pregnant. It. And he likes pasta. That's like the only thing I can think of. <laughs> he likes the carbs. And, and in the middle is death. It's a skull, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I'm going to ask our viewers to like vote for which is the apps. Who gets the award for the absolute worst album cover presented today? And there is no way in hell anyone is going to beat that one. Yeah. yeah. That's what I, I, I forgot all about that. And that's a bad oh. Well, my last pick is pretty tame compared to that. But I'm, I'm going to kind of go back to what Chris was talking about with Sabotage. Um, I, this is kind of an iconic cover to some, but I never got it because, quite frankly, Kiss was trying to show off how dangerous and wild a band they were at this time based on their first two albums. And then they had this stupid cover of them, you know, on the corner of a street in New York City, wearing suits, smiling, looking like a bunch of, you know, but we're a bunch of nice, cool guys hanging on the corner. I, I, does this look like the kind of uh, image you want to portray? based on where you're at in your career at this point in time. I don't know. I just, I never liked this album at all. Well, no, I like the album. I never liked this right, album cover at all. And it's like, you look at all the ones, the couple that came before and all the ones that came after, and then you look at this, it's like, what's wrong with this picture here? Right. Well, it's didn't, funny. Uh, didn't like I was saying earlier with that. What's that? Didn't uh, the next release they had was Alive, right? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the, art, the, art yeah, the artwork for Alive is amazing. That's iconic as shit. That's great. Yeah. Right. Chris, what were you saying? Well, I was going to say, you know, like I said earlier about never putting the band on the cover, unless you're Kiss. That's what I was going to say. Unless you're Kiss, right. then that's okay. Or Immortal. <laughs> yes. Okay, yeah. All right. I mean, the first Kiss album, it's like you got the four faces, and uh, you're like, right. wow, look at that. Yeah. And then Hotter Than Hell is kind of evilish looking, right? And then oh, yes. this. And here they are looking all goofy in their shirt and shirt, you know, suit and ties. And I'm like, yeah, what? You know? I guess too when you start to think, all right, then like Destroyer and Love Gun, like yeah, that's really. That's, that's really what, a, those are great. Love Gun's like yeah, the yeah, best part they ever had. Those are that's great. Like the and Kelly art ever too. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and even Rock and Roll Over is kind of cool looking with yeah. the weird kind of artwork and stuff like that. I just, I don't know. I never got this. I just, it's a great album, but man, what are you thinking? It's like they tried to make all right. Well, we'll do it in negative on the back, and that'll make up a little bit for it. I, you know what? I, where's the costumes, dude? I mean, come on. It's right. like you're not a bunch of businessmen here. That's not what we're trying to, uh, you know, convey that early in your career. I don't know. Just didn't do hey, it for me. Chris, you might be on to something because I almost picked Overnight Sensation, which I think is the only Motorhead that just has a picture of the three of them. Oh, and yeah. I don't even think it's a terrible artwork, but compared to, like, literally every other Motorhead cover, it's just like, right. Oh, I mean, yeah, Bomber, like, Overkill, Iron yep. Fist. Yep. They're all great. Yep. Yep. Yeah, great. Perfect day. Fight, yep. fight Love, you know. Yeah, another uh, perfect day. Orgasmatron. Yeah. Yeah, and that's yeah. Yeah. And later ones yeah, exactly. For later ones too. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, I think we're out of time. So uh you guys watching at home, uh if you want to see a part two of this, let us know. We'd be happy to do it. This was actually a lot of fun, and we'll see what we can come up with. So uh for Ryan Scow, Nick Franco, Chris Alloway, and Pete Pardo. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you on the web at www.catranquilly.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, of course. We'll be we're here on YouTube all the damn time. See you all tomorrow. Have a good one, guys. Thanks for uh doing this. This was lots of fun. Take care, everybody. Thanks for having Bye. us. Later.